welcome back. Throughout most of the elementary hypothesis testing methods, one of the most common requirements for this parametric test is that the set or sets are drawn from normally distributed populations. Most of the time we do not know that the population we are sampling from is normally distributed or potentially some other distribution, say exponential or uniform, so usually all we have to do or all we have to work with is the distribution associated to our sample. So what we would like to do is to be able to look at our sample and determine does our sample almost look normally distributed in order to allow us to hypothesize or conjecture that the population for which it was sampled from is also normally distributed. There's two types of methods that are oftenly used to assess normality or a particular distribution. One is qualitative methods and the other is quantitative methods. Today we're going to be looking at a qualitative method in order to assess normality or some distribution for a particular single sample and these are going to be called quantile quantile plots or if our conjecture is that it comes from a normal distribution they will be referred to as normal quantile quantile plots or sometimes just abbreviated as NQQ plots. The first thing that you want to do is read in or generate a particular sample that you want to work with. For example, this data set that I'm going to be working with is just one that I created called Patient Vitamin Profile. Inside of this data set, I have several different vitamins and several other different uh, characteristics for um, some patients or clients. Um, for example, several different vitamins and the average amount for which they take per day is given in this particular table. So let's focus on a particular vitamin in this profile, for example, thiamine. So one could make a numerous number of conjectures about uh, any of these random variables, but let's assume that we're interested in working with, okay, um, what is uh, a confidence interval for the population mean uh, thiamine intake uh, for the population for which the sample was drawn from, right? So you'd probably be using a z-test or a t-test, depending on if you know the population standard deviation or not. So let's read in that data uh, and see, okay, well, if we're going to use a t-test, obviously uh, we need to make sure that that comes from a normal distribution, else the t-test is not going to be appropriate. Um, so we can look at the distribution of our data set and assess, okay, does it appear to be coming from a normal distribution or not? So the vitamin that I want to make inferences about uh, is going to be associated to the thiamine levels in milligrams. Um, so that's going to be our data set. So everything else in this data set, I'm not going to be focused on. So obviously, if we display these values, then we have all of these values uh, displayed here. So my question is, okay, well, if I were to sort these from least to greatest, which is actually pretty easy to do, so we can just say x is equal to the sorted values of x, and then we can look at our x values here, um, do these data values appear to be normally distributed? And you can say, well, it's really hard to say, right? Um, so usually with quantile quantile plots is we look at the standardized representation of these data points. Um, so for example, all we would have to do to standardize this data set is to find the z-score of each of them based on the mean and standard deviation of that sample. So the z-score for this particular sorted sample is just going to be equal to the sample values minus the mean of those sample values divided by the standard deviation of those sample values. And now what we're going to have is a set of standardized data. And you can again ask this question, do these data points appear to be normally distributed? Well, if it is normally distributed, then they should be uh, symmetrically distributed around the mean of zero, uh, which means on average 50% of these data points should be negative and 50% of these data points should be about positive um, with a more uh, higher density of values um, near the mean of zero, and then they will slowly disperse as you move into the left and right hand tails of this distribution. So that's what we would anticipate to see if this were truly uh, normally distributed. So now that we have our empirical data set, now we need to generate a theoretical normally distributed data set to compare this data set to and see if there is a significant difference, at least qualitatively, between these two data sets. So the first thing that I want to do is figure out, okay, well, how many data points am I actually sampling from? We can easily get the sample size from doing the length of that particular vector. In my particular case, we have 60 values that we're going to be working with. 
So what we need to do is we need to generate an artificial normally distributed data set of the same exact size that is exactly normally distributed. So since we're going to be generating a set of standard normally distributed data points, and since we've already standardized our data set, we're going to be generating a bunch of standard normal values from that standard normal distribution, which we can easily do via the qnorm function and R, which is also used for generating z critical values, which you may be familiar with for testing proportions and sometimes even the mean and maybe some other things as well. So if these points are going to be normally distributed, um, then these n points are going to partition our distribution into n plus 1 regions, where the area between each of those adjacent regions is equal to the same exact amount. In particular, the area should be 1 divided by n plus 1. Right? And if you aren't familiar with these theoretical details, I do have a theoretical uh, contextual video uh, that sort of explains why this is the case. So, in order to generate, uh, for example, 1 over n plus 1, 2 over n plus 1, 3 over n plus 1, all the way down to n over n plus 1, we can use the sequence function to generate all of them at once instead of one by one. So we're going to be going from 1 to n, and we're going to increment by 1, and for all those values, we're going to be dividing by m plus 1, and that's going to give us our sequence. It's going to default with a mean of 0 or a standard deviation of 1, but you can just type these in here just to have sort of a... a a peaceful state of mind. And since we're going to be accumulating from left to right, we're going to be doing lower tail is equal to true in order to generate each of these values. So what you're going to see here for this n set, so this set is going to be exactly normally distributed or as close to normal as you can get with this discrete data set. And if you sort of look at these values, for example, here you have 0 0.06, here you have negative 0 0.6, here you have negative 0 0.10, here you have 0 0.10, and you practically have the same exact values on both sides of this distribution with negative 2.13 and 2.13 on the extremes. And why is that? Because normal distributions are symmetric about the mean, which is zero in this case. Notice that zero is not an element of this particular set because we have an even number of points. If we have an odd number of points, then the middle will be exactly equal to zero. But since we have an even number of points, we're going to be having two numbers that are sort of dancing around the mean, in particular 0 0.0 to a negative 0 0.02. And if you sketch that on the real line, you'll sort of uh, understand why the even odd um, sort of dictates whether zeros in that set or not. All right, so that gives us this artificial data set, and we also have our data set, which is given to be zx. Now, obviously, they're not giving us the exact values, but they should be producing almost the exact distribution of values. So in order to qualitatively assess that, we're going to be building what is called a normal quantile quantile plot. So the first thing that I want to do is create a nice uh, table um, for my uh, random variable and also, you know, label the axes, uh, lower axis and vertical axis um, for this normal quantile quantile plot for this thiamine data set. Now, one good metric that you could use actually for assessing the qual quantitative nature of quantile quantile plots is the average absolute deviation matrix, or the AAD for short, which is just the sum of the absolute deviates of your data set values compared to, for example, um, their means. But all of the means are zero, so in some sense we're just looking at uh, the absolute value for each of these uh, z-scores compared to each other, and we would divide by the number of points that we would have in order to create that good metric. So my t is going to be corresponding to my title, and if you want to have a bunch of fancy things in your title, you could do main is equal to quote, but if you want some, for example, numbers or variables or anything like that, b quote is probably going to be the best choice for you. So this is going to be a n uh, qq plot for the thiamine data. And what we want to do is to present the AAD uh, to our user. So this is going to be the formula side, that's why it's not in green. The tilde sort of says that we're separating these values into text and variable. Uh, double equals, because single equals won't work since we're representing a formula. And this is going to be equal to that parenthesis says we're going to be calculating something and displaying in text the value of that calculation. And we're going to be summing up the absolute value of zx minus m. 
So that's the sum of absolute deviations, or the SAD. And then what we're going to do is we're going to be dividing that by the number of points that we have, and that's going to be my title, right? So that's my title, and that's practically what's going to be displayed in the title of my NQQ plot once I actually have it generated. So once I have my title, now I'm going to build my plot. I'll give it some colors and some shapes to make it look a little bit nicer. Um, so some people will put the uh, empirical values on the horizontal, the theoretical values on the vertical, but in some sense it doesn't really matter. So PCH is just going to be equal to the type of point style that you want to work with. Your main is going to be equal to the title that you want to display. The X label that we want to use is, in this case, the empirical quantiles. And on the Y axis, we're going to have the theoretical quantiles. Okay, so theoretical quantiles. And once we have uh, that spelled out, um, then we're going to have our normal quantile quantile plot, which is given to be this plot here which is actually pretty nice. And you're like, okay, well, that graph looks pretty neat. Um, and keep in mind, you should have sorted your data set by now. That's why it has this always increasing pattern. If it doesn't, make sure you sort your data sets. Um, then you could say, well, okay, well, what should it look like if it truly is normally distributed? Right. So keep in mind, 50% of the data points should be under zero and 50% of the data points should be above zero. So if we look at this data point at zero, zero, then we should see that 50% should be below and 50% should be above. We can compare the median of both of these values and it should match on zero, zero if it truly is. So what I want to do is I want to actually draw or plot the median to sort of get that comparison uh, in my graph. So I'm going to do the median of my zx values and the median of my normal quantile quantile values. Now this is always going to be equal to zero, and this is just going to be the median of our data set. Hopefully it's going to be close to zero, but usually it's not exactly equal to, so don't be surprised if it's far. Um, let's change the PCH style so at least this point looks a little bit different. And also let's also give this a different color. Let's suppose we want to plot it in purple. Right, so there is my median point, and let's draw a couple lines here to sort of see where that point should be falling on. So AB line is going to be equal to the line that these points should all be following, which is the line Y is equal to X, which has an intercept of zero and a slope of one. Let's actually give this line a color because this line is important. Let's call it steel blue. LDW is just gonna make that line a little bit thick, and that's gonna be your normal quantile quantile line. So if those points line up exactly, all of those black points should be on that blue line, all of them. Obviously we do have some change between these points. For example, notice we have this gap right here and notice that we have this gap right here. And we have a couple gaps on the tails as well and that's typically a big sign of non-normality. So usually when you have this pretty much S curve around this line, that usually implies that the data set is probably coming from a uniform distribution uh, and hence is not a normal distribution. That's usually uh, one of the early signs that this is not normally distributed, more of a uniformly distributed when you have that sort of S type of shape. Now let's draw our uh, vertical and horizontal axis just to sort of see where that purple point should be located. Um, so let's do a vertical line and a horizontal line. So my vertical line is going to be done by V is equal to zero, that's vertical line, with X is equal to zero, LTY is equal to two, uh, that's gonna be a dotted line, that's what the LTY um, represents, so it doesn't sort of cloud all of our data. And then AB line with a slope of zero and an intercept of zero, so that's a horizontal line, which is equivalent to the X-axis. And let's also do that in a horizontal line pattern as well. So notice that our purple point here um, doesn't exactly uh, fall on that point, it's slightly to the left. And I'll let you just sort of think about, you know, why that is. Does that imply that it's, you know, slightly skewed to the left, slightly skewed to the right? Keep in mind that corresponds to the median, so you should be able to figure um, that out, at least in the basic inference sense. But this is what we refer to as a normal quantile quantile plot for your data set. And these points should all be lying on that blue line if it is truly normal. You have this AAD, which is equal to approximately 0.215. If those points lie on that line, then you should have that that is going to be exactly equal to zero. So if you want to introduce this into the hypothesis testing world, you can ask, well, is this sufficiently close to zero? Yes or no.
If it's close to zero, that means you have evidence to believe that it's normally distributed. And if this number is super large, quote unquote, whatever that is, then you have evidence to believe that it's not normally distributed. If you want to work with more quantitative methods for assessing normality, there are other tests such as the Komogrov Smirnov, Lilifer, Kramer Vimesis, Anderson Darling, and a few other more advanced methods as well. But we'll work with them in another video. But this is how you do normal quantal quantal plots in R. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.